Israel holds many secrets and some of them are very, very mysterious. The territory which the Bible described that it was given to the tribe of Manasseh holds many mysterious structures that are remains of an ancient civilization of giants. We read about this in the Bible and now there is evidence that there is something weird about this territory. Is it the land of the giants? Today we will explore this question and continue our story of Israel through the book of Judges. So let's begin. In my last episode we discussed the history of Ochniel who defeated the king of Aram and gave 40 years of peace to the nation of Israel. The second judge that we discussed was Ehud. Ehud who was left-handed had assassinated the king of Moab, Eglon. After eliminating the leader of the Moabite kingdom, the Israelites were able to achieve astonishing victory over the Moabites. Next on our list is Shemgar and I don't say Judge Shemgar on purpose because he's not mentioned in the book of Judges as a judge. We even don't know if he was an Israelite. We only know that he killed 600 Philistines with an ox guard. Following Shemgar we have the story of Deborah and Barak and how they defeated the armies of Jabin with his mighty chariots. And lastly in the episode we talked about the judge Gideon. The story of Gideon shows that everything is possible, that even with the smallest amount of people and resources you can achieve great victory if the Lord is on your side. Today we will continue our story with the remaining judges in the book of Judges. And if you have not seen my previous episode, I highly recommend you to see it. I will leave a link to this episode in the description of this one. So let's start discussing the rest of the book of Judges. Our first judge in today's episode will be the judge of Tola. And we don't get a lot of information about this person. Even though in the book of Judges we read that he reigned for 23 years. His name also is a little bit weird because Tola in Hebrew means worm. Is there a correspondence between his name and his character? Perhaps. And it should be said here that it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative description. It may mean that he was very humble and that's why we don't have a lot of information about him. As to his area of operation, we read that he lived in the city of Shamir on the territory given to the tribe of Ephraim. Now we don't know exactly where the city of Shamir is, but we know where the tribe of Ephraim is. And the Bible says it's a hill country and if you look at the topography of this area you will see a lot of hills and today this territory is known as Samaria. Now Tola was most likely not from the tribe of Ephraim although he lived on their territory he was probably from the tribe of Issachar. How do we know this? Well if we go to 1st Chronicles chapter 7 we read of Tola again and that he is from the tribe of Issachar. So Tola was one of the sons of Issachar and the sons of Tola in the time of David in his reign are described as fighting men and their number is 22,600 people. Okay, but let's move on to our next judge on our list and that's the judge of Yair. Again, we are not provided with a lot of information about this judge and we actually need to search the Bible to find more information about him. So first in the book of Numbers 32-41 we can read that Yair is the son of Manasseh. Now if we look at how the land was divided into the 12 tribes of Israel, you will actually see that Manasseh received two portions of the land. 
and that's called the West Manasseh and East Manasseh. We read about this division of the tribe of Manasseh in the fifth book of Moses, chapter 3. We see here that the other part of Manasseh, the eastern part, took the land of Bashan and the kingdom of Og. And we also learn that Yair, a descendant of Manasseh, took part of this region given to East Manasseh. Here once again you can see the different nations that lived in Canaan before the conquest. And the land that interests us is the land of the Amorites, so the kingdom of Og, located here. If we compare it to today's Israel, you will clearly see that Israel does not control this territory, and in fact, most of this territory today is controlled by Syria and Jordan. In the Bible, this territory is often referred to as Bashan. On this map, you can see where Bashan and the major cities were located. You can also see the territory of Argob, which was part of the kingdom of Og before the conquest. In Deuteronomy 3.14, we read that Yair took this territory with its 60 fortified cities. The legacy of Yair was that from that moment, this whole territory was known as Havot Yair. I want to also mention something interesting about Bashan because this terminology is also used by prophet Amos where he refers to the women of Bashan as cows. So here again you can see where Bashan is located and today this region actually is known as the Golan Heights. But what can be confusing is that Amos condemns the women who are called the cows of Bashan and are located not in Bashan, but actually on Mount Samaria. And really, there isn't a Mount Samaria so-called. There are mountains in Samaria. And one of the famous mountains of Samaria is certainly Mount Gerizim, which is very well known from the New Testament where the Samaritans had their temple. But it's more likely that the words of Amos need to be understood in a more general way, referring to the northern kingdom of Israel, which Amos foretells that it will be destroyed. Anyway, if you visit Israel today and you will go to the region of the Golan Heights, you can still see the cows of Bashan. These cows have a good life with plenty of grass that they can eat, which makes them very fat. Anyway, it is also time to talk about a very famous individual from this region, and that's Og from the land of Bashan. In Deuteronomy chapter 3 verse 3, we read that Moses and his army destroyed the 60 cities of Og from Bashan, and King Og, the last of the Rephites, was also slain. What is intriguing about Og is the information given in chapter 3 verse 11, so the last comment about Og. So we read that he was a remnant of the Rephidim and we also get information about his giant bed. We read that this bed made out of iron was 9 cubits in length and 4 cubits in width. And as you can see in this footnote, that means that the bed was 14 feet long and 6 feet wide. That's 4 meters long and 1.8 meters wide. And guys, just to give you a comparison, here you can see a very tall man of 2 meters or 6.5 feet next to this giant bed, which is 4 meters or 14 feet high. And you can see that this bed looks gigantic even next to a man who is 2 meters or 6.5 feet. And once again, 2 meters is not a small person. Michael Jordan, who is considered a tall person, was 2 meters or about 6.5 feet. So you can imagine how giant this bed is. And some of you may say, oh, this is just a story, a fairy tale. But actually, if we look at this area, there are some really weird things that have been found over the years. What you are looking at now is Ruim El Hiri, a unique megalith complex 
in the Golan Heights, regarded as the Stone Age of the Levant. It consists of three concentric circles of walls of various dimensions and a fourth semicircle and a central mount. The monument is made up of 40,000 tons of stones, with some weighing up to 50 tons each. This structure is dated to the early Bronze Age. The Hebrew name for this place is Gilgal Raphaim, meaning the Wheel of Giants. Scholars suggest various functions for the site, including a worship center, a mega dolmen, which means a giant tomb, and an ancient calendar. Whatever it was, it is certainly very weird and mysterious. And we don't know exactly when this place was destroyed and how it looked in its original shape. But what we do know is that this is not the only so-called dolmen found in this area. Actually, there are many, many of those sites that are only found on the east side of the Jordan River. And as you remember, this is the area of the Bashan where King Og lived and where he had his 60 cities that were destroyed by the Israelites. So it's quite interesting that in this area where a giant lived, you have those weird structures that remind us of this ancient civilization. Anyway, I will probably do a separate episode about giants in the Bible. But now, let's go back to the story of Yair. So, in the book of Judges 10.4, we read that Yair had 30 sons that rode 30 donkeys. From this information, we can probably understand that Yair was probably polygamous, having many wives, he had 30 sons, so this is quite logical. And second, that he was quite a wealthy man. Having 30 donkeys in those days was a big deal. And you know, the status of a donkey in Israel, in ancient Israel, in biblical times, was different than it is today. Actually, it was a very valued animal. And we can't forget the prophetic meaning of a donkey. After all, as we read in the book of the prophet Zechariah, chapter 9 verse 9 a messiah will come on a donkey and so you have the creation of the term the messiah donkey and in modern hebrew this means that somebody is doing someone else dirty work and we can't forget that when the authors of the gospels describe the entry of jesus to jerusalem on a donkey they are referring to this particular prophecy about the Messiah. Just an interesting note on this, you can see the people waving palm uh, branches and uh, this is quite unusual because this is the time of the Passover. But they are doing this because they anticipate the messianic era to come. The holiday of Shukot, also known as the holiday of the tabernacles, has this messianic anticipation of the world to come, the kingdom of God, where people from all nations will travel to Jerusalem to worship one and only God, the God of Israel. Now, the authors of the Gospels portray the Jewish people as believing that Jesus will fulfill all those promises at the moment when he entered Jerusalem. And when this does not happen, then many of the Jewish people are confused and don't know what this means. And that's why many of them reject Jesus as the Messiah. Although, of course, uh, there were some that still accepted Jesus. And this is how the first congregation of followers of Jesus is created in Jerusalem, which today could be uh, described by modern terms as a church, although it looked totally different than the church you're used to, uh, for example, in Western countries. It was more, much more Jewish in its nature. Anyway, 
Christians do believe that Jesus did fulfill the promises referring to the suffering and the promises referring to God's kingdom established on earth will be fulfilled when he will come again. Okay, but let's go back to Yair. The last bit of information we are given about him is the place of his burial. We don't exactly know where Camon is, but it was suggested that it may be somewhere below the Sea of Galilee, because there are some mounts, uh, historical mounts, that have similar sounding names in this area. And so we come to the end of today's episode. In my next episode, I will discuss the judges of Jephthah, the judge Jephthah, the judge Ibzan, the judge Elon, and Abdon. So don't miss out on this episode, that will be coming out soon. For now, I just want to thank everybody who is supporting the channel, thanks to you. I can uh, continue my work and provide you with this kind of episodes. This is really important, I think, that I can focus on uh, creating content that is important and not worry about um, the popularity of the channel. Thanks to individual people who are supporting the channel, this work can continue. So thank you so much, so much for your support. If somebody would like to support me, support the channel, the best way to do it is through Patreon and PayPal. I will be leaving links to those pages in the description of this video. Also, I have a exciting news to announce. Soon I will be launching a website where I will have a lot of material for you. Uh, that you can see, uh, there will be different renders that I'm using in my videos, different graphics uh, that you can purchase and use for your own studies. So I'll be uh, announcing this very soon on my channel, so stay tuned and uh, I hope it will be created very soon, so uh, look out for that. Uh, for now, please like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't so yet, and I'll see you in the next episode. Have a great day. Shalom.